everyone welcome or welcome back so let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial because i think it's going to take a while for this video i will be making press-ons because i know i'm going to want to wear this again but you of course can do this design on gel x poly gel acrylic whatever really floats your boat so i'm going to get started by applying this gel base coat by madame glam to each of the nails so since these are press-ons i want to make sure that the polish lasts for a long period of time because i'm going to want to wear these again also with this particular look, I will be applying multiple layers of gel polish. So I definitely wanna make sure there's a base coat at the bottom so that the polish doesn't chip off, wear off, etc., etc., so that I can wear these more than once. So I will be applying a thin layer of this to each of the nails. Now that I'm done applying the base coat, I am gonna go ahead and cure this in a lamp for 60 seconds. So the first color I'm going to be applying is this very bright neon green. When I swatched it for the first time, I instantly thought of the Green Goblin. It is such an in-your-face bright green. I really like this, and typically I would not wear something like this by itself, but when I show you guys it at the end, you'll understand why I'm in love with it. So I am going to be applying a thin layer of this first, and then go from there. This is going to be the color you'll see when you flip your nails upside down. So if you don't like neon green, because I know it's an acquired taste, no, I'm kidding. I know that it's a personal preference. You can use a different color. It's really up to you. So in between each layer of polish, I will actually be curing it for 60 seconds and you will see that throughout the entirety of this video. Since this is the color I will be seeing when I flip my nails upside down because the nails give like a peekaboo type effect, I wanna make sure that this color is nice, even, streak-free, no gaps. So I am going to do a second layer of polish. The next color I'm going in with is yellow and I am going to apply this on top of the green. This is a little bit tricky because that green is very bright under there. You can still see it through the first layer. So I am gonna go ahead and apply a second layer so that we can actually distinguish between the green and the yellow. So the next color I'll be using is this neon orange. So I am gonna apply this on top of that yellow. I have showed this color and the yellow in a Madam Glam unboxing that I will link here on the screen and in the description box if you wanna check that out. With the orange, I didn't feel like I needed to add two coats because I didn't see the yellow underneath of the orange. So it really wasn't impacting the ability to see the orange. So I'm only going to be applying one layer of this. So the next color is red. And no, this isn't the last one we'll be applying today. This is Ferrari Red. I've talked about this in a previous video. I will go ahead and link that here as well. This is one of my favorite reds because it is so pigmented. It's extremely bright and I feel like it is a true red versus some of the other reds that I've used. So with this, you only need one layer. So the final color I will be applying on top is going to be a black. And this is going to serve as a base so that the chrome powder has something to stick to. So black gel polish can be tricky sometimes if you apply too much it may ripple when you're curing it. So I'm making sure to apply a thin layer of this so that I have no issues when it goes to cure. Here is what the black looks like. I am gonna go ahead and cure this in my lamp for 120 seconds. So two rounds of the 60 second cure because I really wanna make sure that that black is nice and set. I don't want any rippling to happen because if it does, it is going to mess everything up. I'm gonna have to start over and I'm not gonna be able to apply the chrome evenly on top of it. Next, I'm taking this bright blue chrome powder. I found this on Amazon in like a 16 piece set. So I accidentally stumbled upon this one day. I took this Mario Badescu spray and I sprayed it onto the nail so that it was wet, but it wasn't saturated, like just little spritz spritz here and there. And then I'm taking the chrome and I'm applying it on top with a silicone tool and I'm just moving up and down. I didn't apply a top coat or anything and it works. I was actually shocked. Now I did try it with water, it did work as well. Don't do alcohol because it's going to dry out the nail and make things a little bit difficult. 
and it was very even and it gave a really nice mirrored effect without me having to try too hard. It almost was like I created my own liquid chrome. Now I apply too much here so I can show you guys the difference. Now, when you apply too much liquid, you can see that the chrome really didn't stick and it looked really weird. But when I took some of that water or some of that liquid off, you can see that the chrome started sticking to it and it slides right on. I have no clue why this works. I don't know the scientific reason. I'm assuming it's more like a liquid chrome, but this works really well. So if you're struggling with applying your chrome powder, give this a try. Don't apply a top coat. Remove the shine from the nail and then apply whatever liquid you have that is not alcohol and then try to apply your chrome on top and let me know if it works for you because I think that I just discovered something. I feel like Ben Nye the science guy. Somehow I able to figure out this chrome and get it nice and mirrored because before I would apply a top coat and then I would go back and forth with whatever tool I had and sometimes it would come out very mirrored and pretty and other times it would come out grainy and I'm like, this is all I had to do was spray some random spray on there. I don't even know where I got the idea. I just did it. <laughs> so it works very well. So there were some spots that I felt like, okay, maybe let me try this again. So I tried to spray it directly onto the silicone tool. You can see that it moved the chrome around, but it didn't take it off. So I just kept going. As the liquid started to dry, the chrome started to show up more and more. So we can see here how the chrome looks nice and mirrored. It doesn't look grainy, patchy, or uneven. It looks good, kind of perfect. So I am gonna go ahead and apply this top coat by the brand Madam Glam to make sure that the chrome is nice and sealed in and it doesn't move anywhere. So now it's time for the fun part. I am taking my e-file and this ceramic comb bit and I'm going to start drilling into the nails. So if you don't have an e-file, you can use a hand file. It actually surprisingly does not take a long period of time with the hand file, so you can use that if that's an option for you. Now, please, please, please wear a mask when doing this step because there's going to be a lot of dust that comes off the nail. Whether you're using an e-file or a hand file, a mask is definitely necessary. So what I'm doing now is just kind of mapping out where I want the holes on the nail to be. I am doing a circular shape, but you can actually do them in any shape that you want. You wanna do hearts, you wanna do stars, you wanna make people, whatever you wanna do, you can do. So I'm taking my e-file and I'm just gonna start drilling. You wanna use a very low speed if you're gonna be using the e-file because you wanna make sure that you actually are stopping at the point you wanna stop at based off the colors that you want to show. So for me, I did wanna show all the way down to that neon green, which was the first color we laid down, but I did wanna make sure that it truly did look like a heat map and you can see the other colors as well. And of course, if you use a hand file, you are gonna have a lot more control with the speed and how deep you go and how fast because you obviously are the one controlling the speed. <laughs> Let's say you don't wanna go down all the way to the green in every single spot, you don't have to. It's really up to you. I also think it's very important that you remember which color that you laid down first so you can know where to stop. Because if not, you will go too far and you don't wanna have to start all over. Now, these shapes are completely at random. It can really be whatever you want. Just have fun with this step. I really enjoyed this step because it was fun, honestly. So I'm gonna do this for each of the nails and I'm gonna let you all watch and then I'll be back. So now you guys can see here what everything looks like up close. I want this to look a little bit 3D like. So I'm gonna be taking this hard gel by the brand IBD and I'm gonna be placing it on top of each of those little heat map sections. Since I'm gonna be using this hard gel that's in a jar form, I'm taking a dotting tool and then moving it around. Now 
Next, I am going in with a second layer of hard gel because the first layer is actually just going to sink into those holes and it's going to level out the surface. So in order to get the 3D effect, I am gonna need a second layer of the hard gel. So before I cure, if there are any parts where the builder gel just kind of got outside of the lines or just went in a place I didn't want it, I am going to clean up the area with alcohol in a flat brush so that it doesn't cure that way and the 3D effect is only centered around the areas where the heat map is. For this particular gel, it needs to be cured anywhere from one minute to three minutes, depending on your lamp type. I have an LED UV lamp, so I just decided to do two minutes since it was in between the one minute and the three minutes, just to make sure everything was nice and cured. So now I'm gonna go in with a top coat. I'm gonna be using the same one I used earlier, which is the Madame Glam top coat, and I'm going to apply this on top of each of the nails. <laughs> So we're gonna do the final cure and you cure this for 60 seconds. And here are the nails. I am obsessed. There are some things that I would do a little bit differently. So I wanna talk about those before I pop these on. So as you can see up close, there are areas where bubbles have formed and I cured them. And the reason why they are there is because I used too much of the hard gel. So if you are doing these at home, I definitely recommend using much thinner layers of hard gel than I use so you don't get those bubbles that form. Now, if you like the bubbles and you want them to form, then so be it. But they still look good to me. I'm not too mad at it. So I am gonna go ahead and pop these on so you guys can see what they look like in natural lighting. So here is what they look like up close. And these are so cool. And I love how you can see the peekaboo like neon green under it, which makes it even more exciting for me. So if you decide to recreate this look, please tag me on Instagram, TikTok, whatever you got. I know I have it. It's in the description box, all of my social media handles. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel on your way out or give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.